Happy New Year to all. I, Dr. Namrata Bhagwat, from IMA Akola, am humbled and honored to be your Master of Ceremony for this endocrine update for today. On behalf of Maharashtra Endocrine Society, IMA Akola and API Akola, I would like to extend warmest welcome to all of you. Swiggy, Zomato, Facebook, Twitter, Zoom, all of these have made our life easier for procuring food easily and for working from home. But all this has come at a cost. The endocrine disorders are on the rise. As a member of society and doctors, we come across these disorders now in our day to day practice. The intention of the organizers is to keep us all abreast of the latest knowledge of these disorders. So without further ado, let us kick start this morning's session with the first lecture. For the first lecture, we were going to have in person Padmashri Dr. Shashank Zoshi, but unfortunately sir could not make it due to unavoidable circumstances. So he has sent us his presentation with his uh, slides. So may I request to please take for this. For this session, the chairpersons are, we have very special chairpersons for this session. We have Dr. Jasmina Gora, ma'am. 537 million people are living with diabetes, one in 10. This number is predicted uh, to rise to around 643 million by 2030 and 784 million by 2045. And it's one in five seconds or 6.7 million deaths occur every year due to diabetes. And half a billion people have made an epidemic of pre-diabetes or impaired fasting glucose. And that's a huge challenge which we are facing. The AAC came out with a new guideline, it's not a recommendation, which is evidence-based, based on person-centered, team-based clinical decision making to improve people and take care of people living with diabetes. Let us look at the criteria and what was the methodology they assumed because we are living in an era of evidence-based medicine. Grade A strong evidence, grade B is intermediate evidence, grade C is B evidence, grade D e is no conclusive evidence or expert opinion and B E L is best evidence level. So let us look at each one of them. Today I am only focusing on diagnosis of diabetes mellitus, current protocol for pre-diabetes and diabetes, glucose goals in people with diabetes, glucose monitoring, and maybe just two points, one on Modi and one on uh, the cluster of diabetes we see, and one definition of pre-diabetes as well as one definition of remission. So diagnosis of diabetes is based on the following criteria. It requires two abnormal test results, either from the same sample or two abnormal results drawn on different days. But in presence of symptoms with the glucose above 200, it confirms the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. It is grade A best level of evidence to expert opinion. Fasting has to be above after 8 hours of overnight fast, more than 126. After ingestion of 75 grams of glucose after an overnight fast for at least 8 hours, more than 200. Symptoms of hyperglycemia may include polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia and a random non-fasting diet, glucose above 200 and a glycosylated hemoglobin of 6.5% or above. This is the standard of care, 1.1 recommendation for diagnosis of diabetes. Pre-diabetes is defined which may be either impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance, grade B level of evidence, special level of evidence. Impaired fasting is 100 to 125 fasting. A IGT between 140 and 199 after 2 hours of ingestion of 75 glucose or an A1C value between 5.7 and 6.4. 1.3 is the recommendation of presence of the so called immune marker, the clinical presentation, to distinguish between type 1 and type 2 diabetes in children and adults when determining appropriate treatment. And we all know that if there is a basal C peptide which is low and there is a presence of glutamic acid decarboxylate or GAD65, 
or a IA2 which is tyrosine phosphatase or a IA2B which is zinc transporter zinc Z and T8 and or insulin antibodies present. It is grade A, best level of evidence 2, which means the likelihood of type 1 diabetes is high. Type 2 diabetes is 1.4. It is basically characterized by a loss of beta cell insulin secretion and variable defects in insulin sensitivity. Type 2 diabetes is often asymptomatic, can remain undiagnosed for many years and US they recommend screening about 35 years of age. Though in India we have recommended any person above 25 with risk factors should be screened for diabetes. Earlier the better. The level of evidence, best level of evidence 1 is grade A. 1.5 is a carbohydrate intolerance which begins or first recognized during pregnancy and dissolves postpartum in gestational diabetes. Pregnant woman with risk factors of diabetes must be screened at the pre first prenatal visit for undiagnosed type 2 diabetes as a standard criteria. And in India, it's universal screening which is recommended. Level of recommendation is B, best level of evidence 1. So it is important to screen all women between the weeks of gestation 24 to 28. We can move it to 20th week. And the one step approach is this a uh, 2 hour 75 gram glucose after 8 hours of fasting with a fasting cutoff of more than 92, 1 hour of 180, and 2 hour of 153. And the two step evidence will have a 50 gram glucose test with a threshold of annual glucose of 130 to 140. And for a woman with a positive screening test, a 3 hour GDT with a fasting above 95, 1 hour above 180. 2 RMO 155, 3 RMO 140, with a grade A best level of evidence 1, being the standard of care recommendation of 2022, November, when the ACE publishes guidelines. Recommendation level 1.7 is to consider monogenic diabetes for MODI in any child or adult with atypical presentation, clinical course of response therapy. This includes neonatal diabetes, non immune diabetes with multiple genetic causes also known as Moody or maturity onset eye diabetes of the young. More children with diabetes occur under the age of 6 months. A monogenic cause of autoimmune type 1 diabetes rarely occurs before 6 months of age. So the level of evidence is grade B, best level of evidence is 1, and usually monogenic diabetes are characterized by mutations in genes or transcription factors, genes regulating pancreatic development, atrophy, abnormal insulin genes, genes related to uh, endoplasmic reticulum stress which impair either the insulin secretion from the beta cells or abnormal glucokinase genes which impair insulin signaling. For outpatient glucose targets, because basically the second point is what should be the treatment goals. Try to keep A1C at 6.5% for most non-pregnant adults if it can be achieved safely, safety is paramount. Glucose targets must be individualized with life expectancy, disease duration, presence and absence of micro and macrovascular complications, cardiovascular risk factors, comorbid conditions, as well as the risk for hypoglycemia. And we should also be mindful of persons cognitive and psychological status. Level of trade, evidence, best level of evidence 1, grade A. To achieve a A1C of 6.5, percent and below, the fasting may need it to be below 100 or 110 and parental glucose below 140. So that is the non-pregnant adult cut point. The non-pregnant adult should be less stringent. If somebody has severe hypoglycemia, hypoglycemic unawareness, limited life expectancy, advanced renal disease, extensive comorbid conditions, or a long-standing diabetes with A1C which is difficult to attain despite of best intensive efforts, as long as the person remains hyperglycemia free symptoms. Level of evidence, grade A, best level of evidence 1. IGT in non-pregnant adults, in most hospitalized patients or ICU, non-ICU settings, a glucose level of 140 to 180 is recommended, provided this target can be achieved safely. In women with GDM, the glucose goals have to be 95, 1 hour 140, 2 hours 120. And the pre meal bedtime and overnight glucose value between 60 to 95, 1 hour 110 to 140, and 2 hour glucose values are around 100 to 120, with a secondary target of A1C below 
without significant hypoglycemia are the standard of A grade best level of evidence for targets. For monitoring frequency, A1C should be measured at least once in six months and at least quarterly in people who have not achieved that target. Somebody at target every six months, somebody not on target every three months, grade of level evidence B, best level of evidence 2. Recommendation number 3.2 is persons who are on insulin should be using preferably CGM or BGM, which is SMBG, particularly in people who take multiple daily injections, not only once we target the history of hypoglycemia. People who do not require insulin or secret about may benefit from simple SMBG to provide feedback on lifestyle choices or to assess level of pharmacological therapy. There is real time glucose monitoring, intermittent interstitial scan glucose CGMs, and preferably in type 1 diabetes, one should try to look at it because it's easy to detect with a great A level BL1 evidence to detect hypoglycemia and DK. Also, the CGMs are recommended in people living with type 2 diabetes or treated with insulin therapy who are at risk for high risk of hypoglycemia or hypoglycemic awareness which have high level of grade A, best level of evidence for So obviously in the current technology of diabetes, we can easily do a snapshot with retrospective data with CGM or we can go CGM with a video recording but we can predict that the diabetes is better. So, Remember that when we are looking at diabetes diagnosis, we are via spectrum of young type 1s, adult type 1s, a type 1 and a half diabetes or NADA, which may be positive with a GAD, and then of course type 2 diabetes with various genomics. The old Modi criteria of Peterson Fajal, so this is like from Dr. Mohan group, onset date of 25 years, autosomal dominant inheritance with multiple generations, absence of ketosis with beta serotonin. Level without insulin for 5 years, impaired insulin secretion as a major phenotype trait, usually no obesity or insulin resistance. However, controversy was in complications. Pajan says complications do, do develop in body. Tatarsan says complications do not develop in body. That was the controversy in 1975. So the essential criteria for body are age of diagnosis should be between 10 to 30 years. Duration of diabetes less than 2 years. Year to my less than 30, family history of diabetes at least in one period, insulin not needed at the first two years after diagnosis. Optional criteria are fasting or stimulated C-peptide, GAD or zinc transport or IA2 antibodies should be negative. There is MODI 1 to MODI 14, and all this characterization has been done by the ICMR Advanced Center of Zinotomics at Chennai or Dr. Mohan Center, which can all be insulated. But a larger cluster we see today is nothing but the type 2 diabetes. And it has two components, adiposity based chronic disease and dysglycemia based chronic disease. And eventually the actionable medical model is cardiometabolic based chronic disease, which outlines a focus of prevention. So at the first stage of type 2 diabetes, it is the adiposity based chronic disease. Uh, it's glycemia based chronic disease of insulin resistance and a model of dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, and hypertension. Then it moves to stage 2 of pre diabetes, where there is excess adiposity of pre diabetes or heart disease. And then it moves to the stage 3 of disease, where the BMI threshold of obesity or the type 2 diabetes or over cardiac disease is seen. And finally, most of the time, we are seeing patients with complications, either cardiomechanic metabolic or biomechanical, macro and macrovascular. So clearly we recognize that both adiposity and dysglycemia have adverse effects on the cardiovascular system. In the current definition of type 2 diabetes, it's a binary definition, solely based on blood glucose. It cannot differentiate people between mild or more aggressive disease and who is prone to develop complications. However, new proposed definitions of diabetes and clusters is looking at both insulin secretion and sensitivity. And the sub-classification is to aim at better particular, uh, you know, prediction of metabolic response. So fundamentally, there are six clusters or distinctive patterns of the type 2 diabetes preceded by pre-diabetes. Some of them get diabetes complications early, 
some of them have a severe insulin resistant diabetes cluster and therefore the action models are different. So each cluster of diabetes is based on BMI, based on the ratio, fasting insulin, dry described, CPT defect, insulin resistance, AB under the curve, and the lipid profile. And based on that, we can actually map different clusters. And based on that, we can look at risk predictions, the beta cell function, the insulin secretion, the obesity and the body, body part composition, and the risk. And therefore, such like clusters in India are being researched and investigated. And in this publication, we only know the heterogeneity of type 2 diabetes. So we know there is an asymmetry in the phenotype. And we also know there is a subclassification of clusters. So the unique clusters which we see are five types. First is SAID, the Scandinavian population, the severe uh, insulin deficient diabetes, SID, the severe insulin resistant diabetes, SIRD, the mild obesity related diabetes, MOD, and mild age related diabetes. So in the clusters, we look at several variables which are clinically relevant, age at diagnosis, BMI, waist circumference, A1C, triglyceride, HDL cholesterol, fasting and simulated sleep. And what was seen in the Indian population was that there are four representable clusters which are predominantly seen. SIDD, MARD, IROD, and CRRDD. This is predominantly unique. And IROD and CRRDD is unique to Indian population. So they allow us to subclassify diabetes better plan their treatment, prognostic, get them better, and decide that it is possible. The standard Asian Indian phenotype was a low birth weight, in fact, at Indian, low age outside of type 2 diabetes, lower threshold of BMI, lower insulin levels and insulin resistance, rapidly declining beta cell function, low adiponectin, defective blood microbiota, low HDL cholesterol, high triglycerides, small density, and is also high. Low B12, D3, low muscle mass of sarcopenia, a lot of inflammation with high therapy, increased abdominal fat and fatty liver. So the commonest variant which we see is mild. Mild age related diabetes, 35.8 percentage, older than patients with other clusters, highest HDL, reasonably well preserved C peptide, mild diabetes, low risk of complications. Second Indian cluster which we see is the SIDD, severe insulin deficient diabetes. Early onset of diabetes, relatively low BMI and waist circumference, low OMA beta, OMA IR, low C peptide, high A1C, increased risk of retinal body. The third cluster we see is IROD, insulin resistant obese diabetes. There is a dual defect of insulin resistance and deficiency, high BMI and waist circumference, high C peptide levels, and an increased kidney risk of diabetic disease. And finally, a special Indian type which we see is CIRDV. Combined insulin resistance and efficiency, 12.1 percentage, low age of onset, the BMI, waist circumference, OMA, beta is between intermediate SIDD and IROD, high triglyceride, low HDL, and there is a dual risk of retinal renal disease. So these are the novel clusters we are seeing in diabetes today. Their prediction models are different, and we can actually now subclassify into subtypes of diabetes based on prognostic risk. What about the final point? would be word remission and reversal. There are very subtle differences. Reversal we apply and remission is what we look at. Partial remission can be achieved for one year where A1C is not in the diagnostic range and passing between 100 to 125. Complete remission is normal classical for at least one year and complete remission for five years is something which is recognized. All the societies, whether it's ADA, endocrine society, US, ESD or diabetes in case say Complete remission is A1C below 6.5% or fasting blood glucose below 100 or EA1C below 6.5 without antibiotic drugs for at least 3 months and review them annually. So type diabetes can be reversed with diet, with surgery, with pharmacological therapy but remission is the right term. Finally, I must thank the organizers for allowing me to do this talk virtually. And I always end all my talks, independent of the title, that we are in a global emergency state in India. We need to prevent diabetes at every level. We need to eat less, we need to eat on time, we need to eat in the morning, we need to eat right. We need to do move more out of physical activity with your meditation. We need to sleep well for at least seven hours. And we should be stress-free and smiling.
Thank you for patient care. Thank you. 